Halo editing's kit can be a little bit difficult to navigate, so I wanted to make a little bit of a small video for you guys to help out anyone who's learning. This is going to be a video showcasing primarily the folders that you can access and the basic controls going into Sapien. Without further ado, let's get started with the video. Starting off, we're going into controls. So now, the middle mouse button will actually let you look around, and then if you right click, that'll let you zoom in. You use w WASD is for your moving, R and F is to move up and down. Control Q allows you to spawn in. It usually melees as well, because Q is the melee. If you press shift, it'll change your speed, and it'll let you know. And if you hold control while you're flying, it'll just make you go faster. Control B will actually allow you to swap zone sets. If you press the home key, you actually get access to a secret debugging menu, which is mainly used for developing and whatever. Going into the folders, we have objects to start off with. We're starting with devices. Now these can be anything from terminals to doors to gates. Machines are the actual like doors themselves or the lights or the things that actually have scripted options. Controls on the other hand, that's where people would actually activate the door and the light bridge and the terminals. Device groups is kind of self-explanatory, it's pretty much just grouping all the devices into a folder. Next up, we have items. This includes the equipment drops and the weapons. Uh, this can include anything from turrets to SMGs to power drains. All that stuff is included. Alright, getting into the next section, we have units. Let's start with the bipeds. So bipeds are mainly used for dead animals, dead creatures. Um, also used for cinematics, I'll any find characters Cortana's used solution. in a specific scene, that'll play and as well. Vehicles, this can right, be anything Jim, from the, the Warthog to the Ghost to the Mongoose. Got him. Lastly, we have Giants. Those are primarily really only the Scarab, that's the only real Giant that uh, exists. Heads up, Marines! You got so trouble! Far. Next up, we have scenery. Scenery is usually objects that have a heavy impact on the scene but aren't meant to be moved. So it's kind of like crashed pelicans and stuff like that. Effect scenery, that's where you get all your smoke and your fire effects. That's usually where all those will be held. Crates are usually just small little objects, small details that add to the aesthetic. Next up, we have creatures. Now, creatures, the best example I can give is Halo 3 on Crow's Nest. Those little rats that you see, those are part of the creatures section. It's generally kind of like uh, peaceful mobs, I guess. Next up, we have sound scenery. This can be water moving and uh, the nature sounds around you. Uh, can be computer sounds, a bunch of different things, just generally whichever. Lighting data. The only example I've actually been able to find so far has been in the storm. Inside the factories, they have a small lighting box on some of the areas. Otherwise, I haven't actually found any uses of it. Skies are pretty much the background you see. It's the 3D cube map. It's pretty easy to change out. You just have to reset the level afterwards and you can change it to whatever you want. Next up, we have squads and AIs. Now this is gonna be a long section. Squad groups is generally a group. You can command a group of squads to follow a certain person, to do certain objectives, to be on a certain team, stuff like that. Uh, the squads themselves are individual uh, little squad units. You can have multiple different people in them. Uh, these are usually used to either place reinforcements or to script certain AIs to where they need to be. Zones is pretty simple when it comes to AI. It's generally where they're able to move their attack pattern and stuff like that, like the areas that they're gonna be circling around and looping through. Objectives are really only used primarily for scripting and showing how far someone's gotten in the mission or in the campaign. It's meant to pretty much help figure out where your AIs are gonna be doing and what they're doing. Script data. So this is the place where you would find the point sets where people would be moving around. So when a pelican flies in dropping off a mongoose, it flies in to specific points and it faces certain points. Hints. These are used mainly by the AI, uh, sometimes by friendly, sometimes by the flood. 
Uh, the Flood use it a lot when they're jumping up or jumping down and stuff like that. Or when they leap around. Fox. So these are pretty much in the background. They're when you see those little flying ships, hornets, banshees, when they're fighting each other in the uh, low detail, low poly. That's usually what you'd see. You'd see that. Next up, we have game data. This is going to be a long section. So starting off, we have player starting points. This is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is where you would be starting off in a mission before the script would actually take care of where you're going to be. If it would be moving you in a vehicle or you just start off wherever. This is going to be where you're starting. Spawn data is the next one. I'm inclined to believe that it's supposed to be for multiplayer. However, I have yet to see any map that actually uses it. Trigger volumes. Now this can be when you walk through a room and all of a sudden buggers spawn through the ceiling out of a phantom, start chasing you and attacking you. A trigger volume would be the one starting this action with a script, of course. Flags. Generally, these are positions used in scripting more than anything, but one good example of it would be a nav point pointing towards your objective and where you need to go. Camera points. This can be for multiple different things. Uh, sometimes it's used in multiplayer to show off certain objectives or certain respawn zones. Other times it's used in cinematics, like in the campaign. Chapter titles, this one's also pretty simple. It's really controlled more in Gorilla, but it just tells you the names of the chapters and you can see the text of what it is. Starting profiles, whether you want Master Chief to start off with an assault rifle or a battle rifle, however you want the mission to start. Decals, this is pretty easy to see in the storm. There is a lot of decals in the start. Almost the entire first start of the mission is filled with decals. Player simulation, I'm gonna be honest, I don't honestly know what this does. I have never used it before, so I can't really guess. Comment flags, those are pretty simple. It's more for the developers or even for note to yourself. Uh, you would just create a flag wherever and it's kind of like a mental reminder of a bug or something to do or fix. Single animation previewer, again, I don't honestly know what that does. I've never used it before, nor do I know what I would need it for. Alright, so obviously this is just a short video to help you guys as uh, beginners, anyone who's just now viewing the program. Hopefully it gives you guys some insight onto how to use the program, some of the functions of it. I do plan on going more in depth and having a few more videos. I plan on making a scripting video because I know a lot of people struggle with that. As well as, I also plan on making some videos hopefully showcasing how to make custom maps, if I can do that. That would definitely be fun, but I'm definitely looking forward to making a scripting video for you guys. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helped you guys out.